Hey guys, Ivan here, and I just have to start this video off by saying forget about Derek Lance, forget about Samson Dada, forget about Nick Walker, Hadi Chopin is winning another Mr. Olympia title. Okay, I should relax, I should take it easy. It's not gonna be that easy. All the other guys that I just mentioned are looking freaky, and there are also guys like Andrew Jack and Brandon Curry, and who knows who else can surprise. So Olympia is gonna be very competitive, but after seeing what Hari Japan looks right now, and I'm saying right now, I highlighted the part of the caption where he says 11th September, which is today. After I saw what he looks like today, right now, I was 100% sure that we were so wrong for writing this guy off. Why the hell did everybody write Hadi off? Because he wasn't posting anything? Because he has been competing for a while? He's not even that old. He's like in his mid-30s. He's not even 40 years old yet. So, like, there is really no reason to think that he's not gonna be at his absolute best or better than ever this year. I mean, the fact is, he didn't progress much since we saw him first at the Mr. Olympia in 2019, so for the past four years, he pretty much looked the same, I mean, some years he was more conditioned, some less, last year he was less conditioned, but like big and full and round, and so, like, he was always pretty similar, you know, Derek Lansford is a very young guy, he is gonna progress now that he moved from 212 to the Open, uh, Samson Dauda has been making a lot of progress from show to show, Nick Walker, also a youngster, so if you consider all that, yeah, it's understandable to think that Hadi is gonna be surpassed by any of these three guys, or somebody else maybe, but after I saw what Hadi looks like right now, at 8 weeks out, man, I don't think that's gonna happen, I think Hadi right now still has the biggest chances of winning another Mr. Olympia title, of actually staying the champion, let's watch this video. So consider the fact that he is 8 weeks out, his conditioning for 8 weeks out is insane, and he's also very big and full, I mean yeah the lighting here is very flattering, but still, you can see, you can see the conditioning, you can see the size, the silhouette, everything is there, I mean look at it from behind, look at the glutes, look at, look at the separation, so he is definitely in good, good condition, and in 8 weeks he's gonna be peeled, and I'm guessing he's gonna just keep getting bigger and fuller and more shredded, and Honey Rambut being his coach, I have a feeling that Hadi is about to look at this when he does this. Like, I'm gonna kill everybody. So, yeah, I think Hadi is gonna be insane. Once again, especially if you consider that he is coached by the best coach in the world, Honey Rambut. So, I'm expecting him to bring something absolutely insane. I'm expecting actually a big improvement from the past years. So, last year they figured out that Hadi looks very, very good when he's full. But he could have been sharper, and if his conditioning is like this at 8 weeks out, I think they are aiming for better conditioning than last year, but they know that Hadi needs to stay full. So Hadi, Hadi Rambert is gonna do that, I'm sure he's gonna accomplish that. And Hadi with his crazy maturity and, and graininess and like all the details throughout his entire freaking body and all this mass and this shape and everything, man, it's gonna be tough dethroning this guy, I know he won only one Mr. Olympia, but it's gonna be a hell of a battle, I mean, there was a possibility that he's gonna come in off, but now after we saw what he looks like right now, and it is confirmed that this is from right now, yeah, it's gonna, the other guys are gonna have their hands full, I don't know if they can take this guy out, I mean, they're all looking amazing and crazy, but... Do any of them really have this combination of graininess, of detail, soft conditioning, of hardness, fullness, roundness, I mean, you name it, like, who has the best combination, that guy is gonna win, and based on what I'm seeing right now, it might be hard, it might, but then again, we have no idea what Derek Lansford is gonna look like after having an entire offseason of actually trying to grow and to progress and get bigger, get as massive as possible with the newly created confidence after placing second at his first Open Mr. Olympia, at his Open Olympia debut. So, you, know, you guys probably know that last year, after Derek won the 212 Olympia, he wasn't sure if he was gonna be doing the Open or the 212 next year, so Honey Rambert kept his foot extremely low, just in case, if he decides to do the 212 so he can make the weight. But at some point, I think it was like maybe 4 months out, they decided that Derek should do the Open, and so he really didn't have an off-season, 
an entire offseason of trying to get bigger. This time around, he skipped the Arnold Classic even. So he had an entire year of growth. And recently Dorian Yates actually made a post in which he said why he never did the Arnold Classic. And it was because historically the guys who did the Arnold Classic didn't do that well at the Mr. Olympia. Didn't usually win the Mr. Olympia. So statistically Derek Lansford is supposed to place above Samson Dauda and Nick Walker both. And he did last year, these two guys were supposed to make improvements to surpass him this year, but they did the Arnold and Derek didn't, he had an entire offseason to improve, and I think he improved, I think he improved a lot. I mean, he just posted this photo, and look at his freaking legs, what the hell, I mean, his legs were kind of a weakness for him last year. Are they gonna be a weakness this year? I think they're gonna be his strongest point, I mean, this and the back as well. So yeah, Derek is gonna be really hard to beat. I mean, Hardy is looking amazing right now, but yeah, I, I, I mean, Derek is probably not in the same condition. He probably doesn't have the same details, the same hardness right now. But as far as like improvements and size, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I have to wait and see what Derek is gonna look like on that stage when he's in shape completely. And once we see that. Yeah, we'll see, we'll find out, but oof, it's gonna be tough, it's gonna be extremely tough. If you guys are looking for a top quality, awesome tasting, isolate, protein powder, I suggest to you Vintage Brawn. It comes in so many great flavors, you can pick your own, whichever one you pick guys, you won't make a mistake. They are all extremely delicious, they are all very low in fat and carbs, and if you guys don't like it, you can even get your money back, but there is no way that's gonna happen because they are all super high quality, and if you use the code EVAN, you get a 15% discount, you save some money, and you also support this channel by doing that. You don't have to google search for it, the link is down below in the caption of this video, once again guys, please, just use the code EVAN, thank you. Alright, next we got a physique update of our current 4 times classic physique Mr. Olympia champion Chris Bumstead. So finally he posted something. He pretty much never posts anything in the off season because he looks like sh he doesn't look very good in the off season because he's not really blasting gear. He doesn't need to. I mean, he's already at the weight cap, so he kind of maintains as much as he can with like doing maybe TRT, maybe even nothing. And then when it comes to prep time, like four months out, maybe five max, that's when he starts adding new things into the equation and he starts looking better and better and at eight weeks out usually he posts something and this is what he looks like right now this is nothing compared to what he looked like last year on stage or what he's gonna look like this year on stage but he looks good he looks very good for eight weeks out especially for his standards once again we know he is gonna be big enough like he can't he can't make any cr any crazy improvements like for example Derek did and Samson and Nick and like those guys in the open like Chris he's already complete it's all about conditioning what kind of condition he can bring and now having Hunter Rambo in his corner he's pretty sure that he's gonna be in good conditioning even without him even without a coach with his genetics he would probably still win and destroy everybody but yeah he also has the best coach in the world by the way so yeah everybody else is battling for second there is no question about it i mean classic physique is boring i mean he's making it fun it's all about seeing what he's gonna look like if he's gonna bring something new something better and maybe who's gonna beat who in terms of second, third, fourth, maybe uh, is Urs gonna beat Ramondino, that's the, the current new rivalry, and like, um, I don't know, is uh, Wesley Wizards gonna be able to, to crack the top eight again or something like that, so yeah, as far as the winner of the Classic Physique, we all know it's gonna be Chris Bumstead, like without him, Classic Physique wouldn't be the same, the quality of the entire division at the Mr. Olympia would drop down by like 50% or something. It would be more exciting though, actually being curious uh, who's gonna win. But yeah, the way things are right now, there is no excitement in the classic physique as far as the winner we all know. It's gonna be Chris Bumstead. And once again, at this point, at 8 weeks out, he looks good. Like he has the muscle, his conditioning is okay. He's gonna be good, he's gonna be amazing, we all know that. Also, he wrote this, this, this post a couple of weeks ago saying that this new prep 
uh, this current prep is like his toughest prep so far. I don't know the details. Why exactly is this the, the toughest prep? If you guys know, you can comment down below. But he is still prepping. He did not give up. He's going to do the Mr. Olympia once again. And he's probably going to win his uh, fifth title. Unless he comes in like horribly, horribly off. Like totally watery or like without, I don't know, a muscle with a completely... But he already had a torn bicep last year and he still won. I think his quad was also kind of torn. So yeah, I don't think anybody can stop him. Nothing can stop this guy. He is going to win another Mr. Olympia. Five, at least. And probably as many as he wants. As long as he's competing, he's going to be winning. Yeah. Also, soon enough, Chris Bumstead is going to surpass his brother-in-law, Ian Valier. Finally. Ian was much, much bigger than him for years, let's say for a decade, I think as long as they know each other, Ian was always bigger, he was an open bodybuilder, and actually one of the biggest open bodybuilders in the world, I think he competed at like 270 or something at the New York Pro, for example, when he won, but usually he was in his uh, mid uh, 260s, so yeah, a very, very massive bodybuilder, but he retired, I think two weeks ago or something, and he already lost a lot of size. So as he says right here, he's uh, 260, but I don't know how, how heavy he was before he decided to retire. I think he was like in his 280s, so he already lost 20 pounds or so. I'm not sure exactly how much, but you can see, you can definitely see that he looks much, much smaller, or should I say healthier, quote-unquote healthier. When somebody tells you look healthier, it means you lost some gains, bro. So Ian definitely lost some gains and he's actively trying to do that. I mean, he's retired. There is no reason for him to uh, cruise around at like 300 pounds. It's unhealthy. It's not comfortable. It's horrible. As I hear, I don't know what it's like, but everybody keeps saying that. And uh, again, he's 260 right now and he's also trying to, um, to, to run. He was a professional sprinter back in the day and he wants to be able to do more of that now like to focus on that instead of bodybuilding and with his mass i'm sure it's really tough for him to do the sprints because when you have so much muscle your body requires so much oxygen and also having all that mass is going to make him slower but yeah as you can see he already lost some weight and he does look more athletic already more aesthetic as well i mean this guy was known for having a small waist especially from the side you know in the quarter turns in the side poses and here he's kind of taking a selfie from the side and again his his midsection looks very very good uh, he looks great overall i mean it's only been two weeks since he stopped uh, force feeding and like trying actively to stay to get it as big as possible so he already lost some mass and he looks healthy he looks very healthy and yeah good for him bad for bodybuilding i would like to still have ian Wallier, you know as a competitor up there but for himself personally good decision i'm sure it's making him happy i hope he's not gonna have like horrible body dysmorphia issues because you know i'm sure it's very very tough to downsize after you've been 300 pound freaking monster for 15 years it's gonna be tough, it's gonna be tough for sure, but yeah, we'll see how he's gonna handle it, I'm, I'm sure he's gonna talk about that on, on his podcast, on Fuad's podcast actually. So guys, that's gonna do it for this video, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, if you wanna see more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to this channel, and if you guys wanna show me some love, you wanna support me, there is the link down below once again, just check it out, buy some of the old school lab supplements, but make sure you use the code EVAN, it will be a lot of help, so thank you guys so much in advance, Thank you for following, all the best guys, see you soon and bye bye.